Hey everyone, it's another O-Gage Tuesday here on Steve's Trains. A few weeks ago I had a video on a Lionel Legacy SW1 locomotive and some initial ideas for a, a relatively small portable O-Gage switching layout. And today we'll look at some updated plans for that and all the new equipment that I've received over the past few weeks, including some new Atlas turnouts, two new MTH Premier boxcars, some additional pieces of track. We're gonna actually try laying some of that out on a temporary board and try test running some of those boxcars and the locomotive through the turnouts and kind of get some ideas of whether some of these track configurations will actually work. So anyway, let's get started. Okay, so first off, let's just look at the things that I've acquired here since the last video. So number one is I have purchased three of these Atlas 054 turnouts. They're all left-hand ones. And so I'll be needing quite a few turnouts for the upcoming switching layout project. And initially I'm gonna get three of these uh, left-handed ones and kind of lay those out along with a crossing and some the curve and straight tracks and just try running some box cars and everything else through them make sure that you know pushing cars through these turnouts isn't going to cause problems and that kind of thing i've never used any of this stuff before i have no idea what is viable and what is not and so we're going to go ahead and try that out uh, also some just random extra pieces of track some curved ones as well i also picked up this 22 degree crossing which i will need for Regardless of what plan I do, all of them will involve a crossing, and that is to help reduce the S-curves in the layout. If, if I, basically, if I move the turnout, instead of having the crossing where I'll have it, it would create like back-to-back S-curves, and, and that would likely cause problems for running equipments. Perhaps more exciting, I do have two boxcars. They're both MTH Premier. I have a 40-foot... AAR boxcar and a 50 foot PS1 boxcar. And so we'll open these up real quick, take a look at them. And 50 foot is the maximum length I could run on this layout that I'm going to be building. I'll probably have mostly 40 foot and just one or two 50 foot to kind of keep things a little bit interesting since that will impact how the switching operations can take place given the space constraints. So that will kind of add some operational puzzle elements, I guess, if I have some longer cars, because I'll have to redo how I do the switching operations. But anyway, here is the 40-foot car in Southern. It's, it's amazing when you compare one of these. Uh, here, hold on. All right, this is a 50-foot car in N scale, a 40-foot car in O scale, and that's pretty remarkable, the size difference. Obviously, a lot more weight to this big guy. But yeah, it looks pretty good. The doors on this one, I guess they do operate as well. So you could add details in there if you'd like. The details are pretty good in terms of rivets and everything else. And, you know, it looks pretty nice. Underbody detail. It, overall, the detail is basically the same as I'll see on N or HO scale cars. Everything is a lot bigger. One thing that is nice with o, o gauge, O scale equipment is that you know, numbers and things are actually readable. In N scale, for me at least, I can't, if I have it close enough to be able to read, it's like out of focus. And if I have it in focus, it's so far away that it's very small and I can't read it. And, you know, so it's kind of a pain, which is why I use picture cards for doing my switching uh, operations typically. But uh, with O-Gage, you can read the numbers pretty easily. So that you can use car cards and waybills and all that kind of stuff pretty easily when you can actually see all the numbers without having to use a magnifying glass. That's a nice feature. But uh, yeah, I, I'm probably going to convert these cars to KD couplers. I'll have to play around with that and see how that all works out. But uh, that's the current plan is to use uh, KD couplers. And since those are more scale to, you know, O scale and, and look more realistic than the bigger uh, claw ones that you have kind of standard. So you now it does make me lose the operational characteristics of the couplers on the Lionel Legacy locomotive where you can just hit the button and make the coupler open and close. So that's kind of sad, but then the problem is you can't do that anyway on the box cars. So uh, either way you have to do some manual uncoupling. But I'm used to using the KD couplers and NHO scale anyway, so I don't really see that as any concern or issue on my part. We will get out the 50 foot car here. So again, same kind of idea here. Details are about the same on both of these. 
but you can obviously see the, the size difference there with the extra 10 scale feet. But anyway, yeah, so this is what I'm gonna test with the locomotive here through some turnouts. So anyway, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so anyway, I think overall my initial plans are gonna work okay. I'll have to try that again once I convert these boxcars and the locomotive to use the KD couplers. And this little operating session here really solidified my idea of doing that because these, these couplers are hard to couple. Like you have to really slam them together to get the cars to couple and that's kind of annoying. So. Uh, Overall, I think that's probably a better idea because the KDs couple, as far as I can, well, at least in HO and N scale, couple really easily. So I'm assuming they'll be the same in O scale. So yeah, I'm still pretty excited about doing this project later this year. The question at this point is, do I do like a door size 24 by 80 inch layout or do I go to eight feet where I can then have another module on the back and make it a full loop? I can do that with the 24 by 80 inch layout idea too, and just have a third module on the side. So it's kind of a whole modular design, but the shorter, the shorter 80 inch uh, version would be a lot more, a lot easier to transport in the car. And I would be able to put it in more places. It would, I could, I could keep it out here and work on it pretty easily moving around some of my uh, 3d printers and stuff. And so I think that's what I'm leaning towards doing is just getting a 24 by 80 inch door and building the layout on top of that. So we'll see, that'll probably change again before I actually start building it. But anyway, look forward to uh, occasional more videos as I acquire more materials, do some more testing uh, during the course of the next few months before I start the actual construction later this year. But anyway, that's all for now and thanks for watching, bye.